Namaste, everyone. Michelle Granberg here. Welcome to another episode of Positive Energy, spotlighting empathy and compassion for both humans and animals. On this show, we're featuring furry, sweet, adoptable rabbits. Bunny Brigade is a nonprofit organization that advocates for the well being of domestic rabbits through adoption, rescue, and education. Stay tuned to find out how you can save and support these innocent little beings. Positive energy starts right now. So I'm here with uh, Brittany and Erica from the Bunny Brigade. Welcome to Positive Energy. Very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. So you brought today some buddies. Why don't you uh, introduce us to who you brought today? Tell us a little bit about them. Okay, you wanna start? Um, you know the backstory. story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so we actually just got these bunnies <laughs> in our one. laps today. Um, they were dropped off while we were here at the studio. Um, they came from somebody who accidentally had a, a male and a female that were not neutered and fixed, and they made a bunch of babies. And this is one of them. They don't yet have names, um, but uh, they will shortly, probably by the end of the day. Yeah. Welcome to the good life, you guys. Yeah. And then you have Franklin there. This is Franklin. Very, very cute. Um, he's very lap. chill. Yeah, he's a really chill lap Keeping bunny. my lap warm. Yeah, he came so from sweet. another situation like them. Uh, they had a male and a female that wasn't fixed, and they had 12 babies. So ah. he's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about sort of, I guess, like the dark side of bunny rescue or the reason why we need to have people rescuing bunnies in the first place because bunnies do experience lots of different types of exploitation and cruelty out in the world, lots of different situations. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, one of the big issues is, especially with Easter coming up, people going to pet stores and buying baby rabbits as Easter gifts. And a couple months after that, when the rabbits start to kind of show their more hormonal side, they start having behavioral issues and a lot of people think they can just dump them outside and that they'll survive. And that's when we get called in with fishing nets and all sorts of crates and everything trying to go outside and catch these poor rabbits that are left. And a lot of times they come to us with severe mites and bot flies and all mm. sorts of parasites and everything. And Do they have any chance at survival when these domesticated rabbits are dumped outside? Probably not really. Yeah, we sometimes they do manage to survive for a while and create these things called feral colonies, which can destroy ecosystems, it can destroy gardens. There's one in Pennsylvania right now that we're still trying to tackle. Um, that's a really bad situation, and they've been out there for about two years. But the rabbits don't live very long, they just reproduce so fast. Um, and that's how they're able to just continue to stay in that area. But they, they die after a year approximately. Yeah. So what's the most common type of rescue situation that you find? And, how, and when you get called, you know, um, where do you, what do you do? So I think the most common one, especially recently, is pet stores sell uh, like bunnies that they say are the same sex, like boys and boys, but usually it's a boy and a girl, and then they have a million babies, and then they don't separate the babies in time and the babies start having babies. So we get a lot of those calls. Um, so when we get them, we kind of just like see where we're at, like what our numbers are in the rescue, and we do what we can. We contact other rescues like Tribbles and Buddy Paws, and we split up the rabbits between us. Yeah. yeah. So what's the most memorable, maybe Erica, rescue that you've been on? Definitely, and in December we took in 20, was it 29 total? 29 total. 29 total rabbits from a rescue in Virginia that were all set to be euthanized. And wow. it took from, us. From where? From a? It was a, a shelter in Virginia. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we, we work with something called the Bunderground Railroad, which is a transport for bunnies across um, states, and we, had a bunch of volunteers that loaded them all into their car and then me and Brittany went and met them and um, brought them back to her place and did intake and I think all of them have been adopted. Yep, at all, least two, all but two. And then one has an adoption this weekend so we'll have one left after yeah. that whole big rescue. But yeah, we've, we've successfully placed all of the other ones. So rabbits have been domesticated I guess for thousands of years or hundreds, hundreds or thousands, thousands of years. Thousands, yeah. Wow, and so, I mean, that's interesting to think about, but what's the difference between wild rabbits and, and domesticated rabbits now? Like, what's the main difference? So, the and North American, ooh, 
Go ahead. The North American rabbits are um, a different species than the European rabbit, which is what domesticated rabbits come from. Mm. So the rabbits, like say we let one of these rabbits go that are intact, um, they could not mate and reproduce with the wild rabbits in North America. Um, but if they were in Europe, they could. Mm -hmm. um, but they are completely different in the sense that like they don't like to be touched They will run away from you and they you know show wild behaviors where as you can see these guys like to sit on laps and be cuddled <laughs> Yeah Very nice And and we can't domesticate wild rabbits Not no, successfully not successfully and it actually mm -hmm. is illegal um, to capture them in most states in the US How can you tell if there's a rabbit outside whether it's domesticated or Wow, I guess by observing. Yeah, there's definitely some traits. They do have different facial structures, and, and I, like, I always look at the skull shape um, to determine. Yeah. So, Erica, what are some of the biggest misconceptions about pet rabbits? Um, that they're not a lot of work and that you can keep them in a cage. Okay. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, and a lot of people don't understand that they should spay and neuter them. They kind of I think a lot of people right. think that Just like it dogs and could cats. be like a guinea pig or a hamster, and you go to pet stores and the cage they sell cages there, and they say this is a rab appropriate rabbit home, and mm -hmm. it's really not. Um, I think as a pet owner, that would be the major misconception. Yeah. Also, that they're they would be a good pet for kids for children, ah. big time. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a myth that they repro they do reproduce at a high rate. Yes. And that's why you need to get them neutered. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they great for kids? What's the reason for that? They don't like to be handled. Yeah, oh, okay. they don't like to be handled. So a lot of the times, like even as an adult who's experienced in rabbits, um, rabbits try and jump out of your arms. And sometimes, you know, accidents happen, but it's more likely to happen with a child. Mm -hmm. They also sometimes don't like to be pet. Like not all rabbits are super cuddly because, mm -hmm. you know, they are prey animals. So they do have some fear and children try to grab at them. And that, mm -hmm. that can cause a lot of fear in the rabbit. So even if they're handled from the time they're small, they could still be so fearful that they won't want to be touched. Yeah. And they'll try, and they'll try yeah. to, and that could be very dangerous. Exactly. Wow. So, um, I don't know, I guess, so how did you, maybe either of you get started with rabbit rescue? And maybe, Erica, just a little bit of that would be curious. Um, I always say I did not choose the rabbit life. It chose me. <laughs> Because I had I had a friend who had a rabbit and he she wasn't taking very good care of him mm -hmm. and she said Erica I'm moving to Maine would you mind watching his his name was Lord Davenport and he <laughs> lived up to it um, she said would you mind watching Lord Davenport while I'm in the process of moving and then we can work out how to get him to me and I said okay and so he came to my house and she never asked about him and I never said anything to her because I just fell in love with this bunny uh. and. Uh, wanted to give him a good life instead of she was keeping him in a cage. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I started. That's with a fortunate turn of events. Yeah. Maybe not a coincidence at all. Yeah. That's kind of how I started with rabbits. And then I actually um, saw Brittany had posted about having a bunch of bunny, having some bunnies that she caught in that one dump situation. Mm one of the feral colonies near us, and I said, I'm gonna, I wanna foster one of those bunnies. So that's how me and Brittany met. How'd you get started, Brittany? So when I was about nine years old, um, I would grow up in the Poconos every summer, and some breeder who had a bunch of sick rabbits, instead of like taking them to the vet or euthanizing them, um, he let them go, and they were just free running. So my mom caught one um, that just like happened to walk up to our front door. It was literally sitting right at our front door, and uh, she caught him, and brought them inside and I was like, wow, these animals are obviously, they need help. So ever since then I've been trying. So over 10 years now, I've been wow. rescuing. Yeah. That's a lot, that's a long time mm -hmm. and that's a lot of rabbits who I'm sure who have been in your care. So what, for people who are thinking right now, maybe I could take in a rabbit, what are the basics of caring for a rabbit? What's the, what's the bare minimum people need to know? What, what is it like in terms of housing them and sheltering them and feeding them and caring for them? Um, definitely the space that they need would be a, a number one. Mm -hmm. uh, they do require like an exercise pen area rather than a cage. Yeah. Um, and they are most active at night too. So a lot of people say we're going to let the rabbit out during the day and then we'll put him to bed at night, which in the rabbit's eyes, like their nighttime is kind of daytime. Yeah. A lot of times. So. Morning and, and evening, I think, is like yeah. their most like 3 o'clock in the morning is when they like to 
to be zooming around. Something and zooming around all <laughs> yeah. <of it>. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, another thing to mention there, um, be prepared for a lot of expensive vet bills. Uh, rabbits yes. are very mm. expensive rat animals and they also have a lot of medical issues. Um, the, whether it's their teeth, their teeth continuously grow. So there's a chance that you're gonna end up having to get their teeth ground down. Mm -hmm. um, spay and neuter, if you were to buy a rabbit from like a pet store or, or a breeder, um, that can run you hundreds of dollars as well, mm -hmm. um, which is why going through rescue is great because we vet them and spay right. and neuter them before. We take care of all that. Yeah. <clears throat> and also be ready for about 300 poops a day. Yes. Per 300 rabbit. poops a yeah. day. Yes. Wow. So a lot of litter box <laughs> cleaning, but they, yeah. they can be litter box trained. Um, so they, they, just like a cat, like to contain it in one spot. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely a good thing to keep in mind too when you're considering a rabbit as a pet. Yeah. How long do they live generally? I guess it depends, but how long generally? Eight to 12 is kind of the average that we see for rabbits that have like, you know, just seem to go at old age. Um, but we've heard of rabbits going older and up to 16, I think is the Guinness World Records. 18 years old? 18 said? to 16, I think is what they said in the Guinness World Records, yeah. Wow. Very okay. cool. And how many different types of breeds are there? Ooh. Do you That's know? Or There's a lot. Maybe just, I want to say like 40 to 60 or something yeah, 40 like to that. 60 yeah. different yeah. breeds? Like rabbits. recognized by like the people that do breed them. Um, but there's like rabbits come in all shapes and sizes. Like some of them are, can be very strange looking. Mm. Um, very unique and, and sometimes they don't even look like they're the same species. Like I have a rabbit at home that's a Rex rabbit that um, has plush fur. So it's very mm. different from this, very short mm. um, and velvety almost. Just have to look at them, just so <laughs> sweet. Everybody look at these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beings. They're so sweet. So well-mannered. So, yeah. They're so just calm right now. <laughs> Franklin the lights like and everything. Yeah. yeah, Franklin is having a great time. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> so what maybe are some of the biggest mistakes people make when they first get rabbits and what do rabbits eat? Um, okay, I can take this one. Yeah, the biggest mistake is a lot of times pet stores sell food that's not safe for rabbits, like yogurt drops and seeds and stuff. Um, so a lot of times people will be like, oh, I'm gonna hand this to my rabbit. And then they get like extremely ill and like either pass away or they have to go to the vet. Um, so that's like a big um, misconception. What else do you think? Um, any, anything like you said with seeds yeah. being fed to them and then they can go into GI stasis, which mm. um, pretty much their gut stops moving. Oh gosh. And they can that can kill them actually pretty quickly. But pet stores sell them sell seeds as rabbit food. Yeah, they'll have fact they're toxic, they're they're dangerous. Yep, they'll have the rabbit picture on the the thing as like yogurt drops has a picture of a rabbit on it, but I've known rabbits that passed away because of yogurt drops specifically. Stay mm -hmm. away from those. Yeah. And, it, and do they love carrots as much as we think they love carrots, or is that just some a myth? Some of them do. <laughs> some of them do. I've, I've known some that don't really right. eat carrots too much, but they're also not supposed to be given carrots, yeah. other than um, as like a small treat because they're too high in sugar. Oh, so not as a regular part of their diet. Definitely They should not, not have no. carrots every day. Hay should be their main. Hay is their main yeah, staple. Yeah, Timothy hay, orchard grass, or meadow hay are great options, and oat hay as well. Um, and a lot of times people can be allergic to Timothy hay, but there's other options like oat and um, orchard grass that has a lot less allergens in it. Um, but then you can also give rabbit pellets, which are like we suggest oxbow or Sherwood pellets. Mm. Um, those are a really good option. Um, and then like vegetables like romaine or dill mm. and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. Like what we eat a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Yeah, like a nice <laughs> salad. Share your salad yeah. with your salad buddies. with no dressing <laughs> on it. Yeah. But if you're having a salad, you can share some of your salad, yep. right? Lettuce, mm -hmm. yep. most, most everything like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and fruit sparingly. So my, fruit my bunnies sparingly have well. found out recently that they love blueberries. So <laughs> they get a blueberry here. It's the cutest thing. If you've ever seen a rabbit eat a blueberry. It's yeah, adorable. they love it. That's a treat. <laughs> So these beautiful, beautiful rabbits, how intelligent are rabbits? Depends on the individual, <laughs> just like any species. But um, yeah, some rabbits can, like you can, they know their names, they know no, they know treat, like oh. they can so learn You can words. teach them commands yeah. or words. Exactly. <laughs> they you can, can actually understand. teach them tricks too. Yeah. I've, wow. I haven't tried it, but. There's people I've, that, seen, I've seen videos of people teaching their rabbits how to play like little basketball games and all sorts of stuff. And like agility courses, like yeah. dogs, but like 
like a lot more toned down than that. Um, even though rabbits are jumpers, they usually have like a little bars low and the rabbits will hop over. It's very cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a misconception that they just, that there's, you know, they're just gonna lay around. You can interact. You can interact with them. You can bond with rabbits. You can Absolutely. get to know them. They get to know you, just like any, just like all species. Yes, and they want to love, and they're they are affectionate. Yes. Yes. They show, how do they? How do rabbits show affection? So my bunny, I had one of the most affectionate rabbits I've ever met, and I've met hundreds. But she would like hop on the couch with me just to like sit and watch TV. She would hop on my chest and give give me kisses. She would lick my face like a dog, um, and just like show general excitement when you walk into the room. Um, her eyes would light up. She would come chase me around. And we would like walk around the house together. There, yeah. And they also beg for pets and attention too. They'll walk up and boop you for attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. They're very interactive if if you give them the right like like the right space and and life. And they feel, of course, if they feel safe and, and secure. Yeah, exactly. Are they affectionate with one another? Do they nuzzle and cuddle with each other? They do, and they actually you can bond rabbits. So, oh, okay. uh, like a bonded pair, um, I have a few at home and they don't seem to care much about me because they're so interested in each other. And they'll groom <laughs> each other, they cuddle. Um, and for, the sad thing is when one passes away, you actually Aww. see that they're, they know, they understand that their mate is gone. Mm -hmm. Or if the mate is sick, they can usually tell that, sure. that they're sick. So they really do pretty much kind of bond for life and then mm -hmm. they, when they lose their bonded pair, they can go into like depression where you, then you know that it's time to find them a new friend. Yeah, it's and it's really sad. important to note too, you can't just put two rabbits together um, and just hope for the best. It's a whole process um, bonding. You have yeah. to, we, we actually do a lot of speed dating at our rescue where people can bring their fixed rabbit um, and meet the opposite gender mm -hmm. um, and, and speed dating. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we let the green. rabbits choose. Yeah. Let who, them choose each just like people. Exactly. Yep. Just like people. See who they vibe with more and then they go home. Um, so it's and usually still it's like a couple months process at home where you have to keep them separate then do small introductions mm -hmm. for 15 minute intervals and it takes it could take a while. Some people had bonds take up over a year mm -hmm. to, to happen, but it's doable. So overall, two is better than one. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So if people love, you would recommend rabbits to people who really love affectionate animals. Yes. And and lap lap animals. Yes, they I would love to be on their lap. Suggest reaching out to rescues too, um, yes. and and asking them what is your like your most friendly rabbit gotcha. that you have because, like I said, not all rabbits are super affectionate, and some of them do like have experienced trauma that makes them afraid of people for whatever reason. Um, so it's always helpful to reach out to rescues because um, you don't you know what you're getting in that sense. And Let's the rabbits are in in foster care, so they have like Brittany and me um, who are actually interacting and get to know them. So we can tell adopters their personality and suit them with the the correct rabbit. That's beautiful. Sorry. Yeah, you can tell them about their personalities. Yeah, exactly. Get to know them, and then their personalities <laughs> absolutely come through. So. Let's talk a little bit about Bunny Brigade a little bit more in terms of um, if someone wanted to give up a rabbit for adoption or if someone wants to adopt or someone needs help with rescuing, what's the first step? Um, reaching out to us via um, Facebook, uh, uh, email, um, on our website too, we have a contact form. That's the first step for any, any process um, to relinquish or to adopt. Um, and then we will either send you a surrender form or an adoption um, form mm -hmm. and go from there. So it's like we have an interview process um, for those who are looking to adopt. It takes about an hour. And then in person, we talk for over an hour usually um, at adoption events and, and discuss the rabbits and make sure that they go to the right place and that the right. rabbit, the person is also leaving with the rabbit that fits them the best. Yeah, you have to do a lot of education, which is part yes. of the organization to mm -hmm. educate, especially for first time you know, a rabbit owners. Yes. I don't like to say rabbit owners, but <laughs> part of our and they um, become companions. Yeah, part of our adoption, like when when somebody films out fills out our form, we actually have like a rabbit one oh one basic like mm -hmm. educational material in the very beginning that people review which helps get them un to understand what they're looking at when it comes to getting rabbits as a pet. I love it. <laughs> so you help with rescuing and so fostering. So let's talk a little bit about fostering. What are the benefits of fostering? What do you love about fostering, Erica? 
that um, you would be, you know, happy to, to shine and say how wonderful it is? I love just the reward of seeing all these rabbits through to the adoption process and mm -hmm. going through with the new family and, and seeing the joy in, in their faces when they take home this new bunny. And then we do keep in touch. I try to reach out to anyone who has recently adopted within the first couple of weeks. I'll mm -hmm. keep in close contact with them every couple of days and ask them how everything's going. And they'll send me, pic they'll, they'll start just sending me pictures sometimes through text message mm -hmm. um, to say, you know, so-and-so is having a having a good day today and like they're just flopped over and they just look so happy and it's so rewarding to see these rabbits that are coming off the streets and now they're living in a house and they have bed like cushy <laughs> beds made for them and they're wearing bandanas and having their birthday parties <laughs> and living their best lives yeah yeah very spoiled so you highly recommend fostering yes. for someone who has a space for that and has the time. Mm -hmm. So how much time commitment is usually involved with it? Like realistically, if you want to foster, it's not something you want to take on lightly. Yeah, it depends on how many you want. I mean, like Erica and I have a lot of rabbits, so it takes us hours every day um, to, to go through and do their care and make sure everybody's clean. Um, but if you were to have like one or two rabbits, um, it depends, like if you were to have one by itself, I would say like it could be just like up to an hour of like interaction, just like petting and then maybe 15 to 20 minutes of cleaning, not very much. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's very, it's not that difficult um, for sure. And fostering is also great for people that might potentially want to adopt a rabbit but aren't totally sure because they can do yes. a foster to adopt process. Yes. yes. Which is a step yeah. in the middle, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A trial. Exactly. To see <laughs> how, if you're a good fit as a foster yes. mom or dad, as a bunny mom or dad. So, what types of help do you need from the public? Um, do you need donations? Yes, always, yes. always, always. <laughs> do you guys do events? Do you do adoption events? Um, or. Um, do you need more fosters? Obviously you need more adopters. Yes. How do you, I guess social media is mainly how you- That's our main way to reach out to the public. Expose people to the rabbits that are up for adoption. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about pet that. Pet finder. Oh, you have them yes. a pet finder, yes, okay. So yeah, finder. all of our, we are very, like we make sure that our pet finder is up to date as much as possible. Um, so if like a rabbit is getting adopted, like we mark, take them down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's been successful for us. Um, a lot of people appreciate having transparency on like what we have yeah. available on pet finder. Um, so, but yeah. <laughs> so do they get adopted fairly quickly? Like what's the trend, I don't know, trend or the rate in which rabbits get adopted? Is it slow right now or they're? It's speeding up I think and it, it could be because Easter is coming. Um, so that is a concern. Um, mm. But like it, it does sometimes we'll have like a slow period but we've had upwards of five adoptions a week. Um, but we're constantly intaking. So anytime mm -hmm. we have adoption, we save a rabbit. So technically whoever adopts from us saves two rabbits, the one that um, they're adopting and then the space that they made for another one that needs it. I see. You were gonna say something, yeah? Um, About adopting? Don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> is there a cost for adopting? Oh. There is, yes. Um, the adoption fee for a bunny brigade is $60. Okay. And for right, because they come neutered and they come vaccinated. Yes, right? which we do pay. Well, vaccinations, um, we don't currently vaccinate only because it is oh, like right. a two-step process. So there is an RHDV vaccine, which is a rabbit, hem rabbit hemorrhagic disease that's spreading across America. And we did try and get some of our rabbits vaccinated, but you have to get the shot 21, like within a 21-day interval. So that has like made adoptions difficult. Mm -hmm. So we just urge our adopters to go and get the vaccines at their vets and we refer them to the vets mm -hmm. that have it available. Gotcha. And do you need a special vet or do all, are all vets usually trained in caring for rabbits or what, is there a certain name for Yeah, the they're called vet? exotics vets. And exotics I know that they vets. have to go to school for a lot longer than a regular dog and cat vet. So they're, they're specialists. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they do cost more generally. But um, not all exotics vets also carry the vaccine. So it, right now, this is a brand new vaccine within a couple months. It's just been in like available to us, the public in America. So. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely reach out to your local rescue, no matter where you are, um, and see where they're getting access to the vaccine. Very good. You guys have given us some really, really amazing tips, and we really want to encourage people to, if you're curious about adopting, to reach out. And if you know of a situation 
where, where, where rabbits may need to be rescued, don't hesitate. Right? Yeah, if you exactly. see rabbits outside and they, they look friendly, they don't, they're not running away or whatever the signs may be, they, to reach out. Yeah, yes. if they're any other color than the regular like brown cottontail, cottontail that you're used mm -hmm. to seeing running right. around, call us. Or Gotta call be some somebody local. dumped yeah, potentially. Exactly. This is a domesticated rabbit. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and we're always looking for more donations, of course, because like the money that we get, we're a nonprofit, goes directly back into spaying and neutering, and then we can take on more serious medical cases, which we might not have been able to afford before. Um, so like, for example, like broken legs and situations mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then fosters, we do, we're looking for more fosters all the time. Um, and adopters yeah. is our number one. Well, thank you so much for bringing them onto the show today. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. So any final words for our audience? Erica and, and then Brittany? Um, I think we just wanted to give a shout out to our rescue partners, um, Tribbles, Buddy Paws, and Peaceable Kingdom. And you couldn't we, do it without them. No, yeah. we couldn't. We really <laughs> we really work wonderfully together. Yeah, we tag team on so yeah. many rescues and if we didn't have them, you know, we couldn't do some of these huge intakes like the thirty that we saved from Virginia. Mm -hmm. so. It takes a village. It really it does. does. There's a lot sure. of really great people out there that like to do this. Thanks, you guys. Right. You've been amazing. You've been so quiet. Anything you want to say? <laughs> Probably I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> hungry, <laughs> we eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having <laughs> us, too. Thank you both so much for being on Positive Energy. Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you. You're saving lives. You really are, and every life counts. One hop at a time. One yeah, hop at a time, no matter how small. Yeah. And, and certainly, yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank too. Thank Thanks. you so much. <laughs>